common peroneal nerve. Common peroneal nerve is also known as common fibular nerve and it is derived from the ventral rami of L4, L5, S1 as well as S2 and it is the component of the sciatic nerve. It arises in the lower third of the thigh that is just above the popliteal fossa what you can see over here and now after it enters into the popliteal fossa it passes just beneath the edge of the biceps femoris tendon. After that it runs over the plantaris as well as the lateral head of the gastronemius and over the fibular attachment of the soleus muscle. By the time it reaches the lateral aspect of the fibula, it winds around the lateral aspect of the neck of the fibula to reach deep to the peroneus longus muscle where it divides into deep as well as superficial peroneal nerves. So let us discuss in detail about the superficial peroneal nerve as well as the deep peroneal nerve. The superficial peroneal nerve is the main nerve of the lateral compartment of the leg and it arises on the lateral aspect of the neck of the fibula as a terminal branch of the common peroneal nerve with the peroneus longus muscle. And next is the superficial peroneal nerve passes between peroneus longus as well as peroneus brevis and it passes in groove between peroneus brevis as well as extensor digitorum longus. By the time it reaches the lower one third of the leg, the superficial peroneal nerve pierces the deep fascia over here and becomes superficial and divides into the medial as well as lateral terminal branches. And when we talk about the medial terminal branch of the superficial peroneal nerve, the medial terminal branch divides into two dorsal digital nerves what you can see over here very clearly, one on the medial side of the big toe and other for the second interdigital cleft. And next one is the lateral terminal branch. The lateral terminal branch of the superficial peroneal nerve also divides into two dorsal digital nerves for the third as well as fourth interdigital cleft. This is what is about superficial peroneal nerve. And when we talk about the deep peroneal nerve, deep peroneal nerve is the nerve of the anterior compartment of the leg and superficial peroneal nerve is the nerve of the lateral compartment of the leg. So this deep peroneal nerve which is the nerve of the anterior compartment of the leg or we can say it also gives innervation to the dorsum of the foot. Like superficial peroneal nerve, the deep peroneal nerve also arises on the lateral side of the neck of the fibula as the terminal branch of the common peroneal nerve within the peroneus longus muscle. Now, after it arises at the lateral aspect of the neck of the fibula, it then pierces the anterior intermuscular septum to enter into anterior compartment of the leg. And in the anterior compartment, it pierces extensor digitorum longus and descends with the anterior tibial artery what you can see over here. Now, the deep peroneal nerve ends by dividing into the lateral as well as medial terminal branches which is close to that of the ankle joint. If we talk more detail about uh, the lateral terminal branch of the deep peroneal nerve, it runs laterally and ends deep to the extensor digitorum brevis as a pseudo ganglion. But on the other side, the medial terminal branch of the deep peroneal nerve runs forwards and ends at the first interdigital cleft. Now let us discuss in detail about the branches. So when we talk about the common peroneal nerve, before dividing the common peroneal nerve into deep as well as superficial peroneal nerves, the common peroneal nerve gives of the following branches. One is the articular branch. Articular branch is given off to the knee as well as superior tibiofibular joint. And next is the lateral sural nerve. 
is a branch of the common peroneal nerve which supplies the skin on the upper two-third of the lateral area of the leg on the posterior surface. And there is another nerve called a sural communicating nerve. So the sural communicating nerve joins with the sural nerve itself which is the branch of the tibial nerve and supplies the skin of the posteromedial aspect of the lateral half of the cough. And if you talk about the branches which are given off by the superficial peroneal nerve, the motor innervation is given off to the two muscles. One is the peroneus longus and second one is called as the peroneus brevis. And when we see the cutaneous innervation more carefully over here, the superficial peroneal nerve supplies the skin of the lower one third of the lateral side of the leg and the dorsum of the foot except for the places where it is supplied by the saphenous nerve as well as the deep peroneal nerve. And the medial terminal branch of the superficial peroneal nerve supplies the medial side of the big toe as well as the second interdigital cleft. And the lateral terminal branch of the superficial peroneal nerve supplies third as well as fourth interdigital cleft. And let us discuss about what are the branches which are given off by the deep peroneal nerve and first one is the motor innervation. So the motor innervation by the deep peroneal nerve is to the following muscles as you can see here one is the tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, extensor distorum longus as well as peroneus tertius. So all these four muscles are of anterior compartment of the leg and the lateral terminal branch of the deep peroneal nerve as I already mentioned that it ends as a pseudoganglion and the branches from the pseudoganglion supply one important muscle known as extensor digitorum brevis and the medial terminal branch of the deep peroneal nerve supplies first dorsal interosseous muscles. This is about the motor innervation and what is the cutaneous innervation over here? The medial terminal branch of the deep peroneal nerve supplies the skin on the adjacent sides of the big as well as second toes that is the first interdigital cleft. Now what about the articular branches? As discussed earlier, the lateral terminal branch of the deep peroneal nerve ends as a pseudoganglion but the branches from the pseudoganglion supply ankle joint, tarsal as well as metatarsal joints and lateral sites of the foot. Now let us discuss about the clinical correlation. Now in this, the very important one is the common peroneal nerve injury. So what is the etiology of the common peroneal nerve injury? More commonly, the common peroneal nerve is injured by the direct trauma or maybe because of the fracture of the neck of the fibula where the common peroneal nerve winds around the posterolateral aspect of the neck of the fibula. And other like less common causes include tight plaster casts. What about the clinical features? First one is the motor loss. So the foot drop is an important condition because of uh, injury to the common peroneal nerve. It is mainly because of the paralysis of all the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg like tibialis anterior, extensor distorum longus, extensor hallucis longus and peroneus tertius. And there will be a loss of extension of toes especially because of paralysis of the extensor digitorum longus as well as extensor hyalusis longus. And there is loss of eversion of the foot. It is mainly because of the paralysis of the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis which are important avatars of the foot. And the patient cannot stand on the heel mainly due to paralysis of the dorsiflexors and avatars of the foot. Now let us discuss about the sensory loss over here. The sensory loss is especially seen on the anterolateral aspect of the leg and whole of the dorsum of the foot except the area which is supplied by the safeness as well as the sural nerves especially because of involvement of the cutaneous branches. And this is about the clinical anatomy associated with the peroneal nerve as well as its branches. By this we completed one of the very important topic called as the peroneal nerve.